You all right there, ladies and gents? How's it going? Out on the V85, happy hippo. Loving it, mate, loving it. This is the first time I've ridden the bike since fitting the Zard exhaust, the uh, slip-on silencer. And I'm feeling a little underwhelmed. <laughs> Now, although it's a lovely bit of kit, it looks gorgeous. Um, yeah, <laughs> the heat shield that came with it, it rattles like crazy. So I need to do something about that. And uh, <sighs> the noise, admittedly, it's with the baffles in, but the noise, it's no louder than the standard can. <laughs> What's the point in that? <laughs> Um, so yes, those baffles are well and truly going to be coming out before I ride this thing again, I think. <laughs> In a way, I'm actually really quite pleased that the uh, bike is still very, very quiet with the baffles in. Because it means if I go on a bike tour or something like that, then I can walk them back in and uh, not have to worry about my eardrums particularly, other than the wind. Because it does get a bit draining if you have a, a particularly fruity exhaust note when you're on those longer distance rides um, so yes uh, I'm kind of glad about that it means I can put the baffles back in when I go on uh, bike tours and stuff which is what this bike's all about for me I do love the look of it I'll uh, show you that once we get up to Rikers but the uh, the carbon fiber heat shield is, is a bit of a disappointment to be honest um, I will have a play with it. I might well have assembled it incorrectly, but I don't think so. It's two screws for God's sake <laughs> So um, yeah, I'll have a look. I mean, I'm sure I can do something to fix it from having it rattling around uh, I just don't think you should have to Anyway, um, that's what that is. That's that's not the end of the world. It's just a heat shield and I, I can fix that myself It just shouldn't need to do that should you? Um, but the fit and finish of the actual exhaust pipe is lovely. It, it looks gorgeous, it really does. So I'm really, really quite pleased with, uh, with, with how it looks. I just need to get it sounding a little bit better because that's obviously the whole point of changing the exhaust. I'm not fussed about performance on this bike. It's already got enough for what I want to do with it. Just want it to sound a little bit more appealing to my eardrums. This is the first nice day we've had in a long while and uh, I thought it would be criminal for me to not get out on the motorcycle so that's what I did. I donned my biking clothing threw a leg over the bike and we're out and about. It's just about coming up for lunchtime so it's just perfect for heading to Rikers. Well that's if you like their food that is. <laughs> I doubt the camera can pick it up at the moment, um, even with me looking directly at you. But if you think oh, I'm winking at you, I'm not. I've got a sty. I've got quite a sore eye with it. It's, it's beginning to bug me. I'm hoping it clears up because tomorrow I'm supposed to be going green laning. So I really want it done with by tomorrow. <laughs> so I might be lancing it with something today uh, just to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, it's really, really annoying. Stupid body. <laughs> Yeah, so although the sun's out at the moment, it's pretty nippy. It's pretty nipply indeed. Um, yeah, about six degrees, or oh, seven degrees now. So I'm very much glad for my heated grips. They are doing me dandy. What an absolutely proper puck of day. It's glorious. Well, I can cope with the chill, but having the sunshine, oh, it's amazing, it's amazing. I'll tell you what, this bike does keep surprising me. It's just so nimble and I know it's uh, mainly to do with the big handlebars that it's got that uh, help you throw it around. But it hides its weight so well and although it's not necessarily the heaviest of the uh, sort of touring ADV bike type things, it's certainly not as light as my 765 was, but it's nimble as, nimble as. Absolute delight to ride. Especially at these more sort of chilled out paces. Um, 
I mean, obviously it's it's not going to be a street triple on track. It's not going to be like that at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a, just a wonderful, wonderful motorcycle. Oh, well, keep your hands on the handlebars, Pete. Keep them toasty warm. Them heaty grips. Oh, I'm just jizzing. <laughs> I've been hearing an awful lot of noise about the uh, new Honda CRF 300 L and Rally, and uh, I think that's going to be quite a little motorcycle. Now you know that uh, most of my off-roady stuff, in fact all of my off-roady stuff, is dual sporting basically. I have to ride the roads to get to wherever I want to go. And it means that my Vita, my 390RR, is, is not really that practical for it. It's got servicing by the hour, I mean I have to drop the oil every other week sort of thing on it. And um, yeah, I mean obviously I, clearly the air filter is part and parcel of owning a dirt bike you need to make sure that stays clean or else you're going to kill your bike in no time at all and that's whether you've got a dual sport or a, uh, a proper enduro like the Vita is um, but yeah having to drop the oil so often is a real pain and it's one of the things that put me off the Honda CRF 450L um, I mean it's a cracking motorcycle that is but having to drop the oil every 600 miles it just seems like an absolute ball bag of an idea so uh, I didn't go with that one but the uh, the 300 it's got the same or similar service intervals as the uh, CRF 250 has so it's like a proper bike it's like my beta out um, 4.0 was and although it sounds incredibly odd that I'd consider it I, I would actually consider getting rid of the beta 390 and uh, getting one of those um, 300 CRFs because it would open up a whole new amount of roads to me I mean I'd like to get myself a van and if I get myself a van then I can do the adventuring on the 390 the beta 390 um, because I can just throw that in the back of the van do the motorway bits in that and then pull it out at the dirty end and have some fun in different parts of the world or country and stuff um, but I'd not be able to take that bike on an adventure by itself. Uh, I wouldn't be able to load all my camping stuff onto it particularly easily. And I'd uh, really not want to be doing oil changes while out and about on a journey. Not a day's trip sort of thing. I mean, it's easy to rack up enough hours on one of them things to need to do an oil change just on the road work. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's a thought in the back of my mind. Now, I very much love my Beta 390RR. I think it's an absolutely incredible motorcycle. And now I've got the suspension sorted and I've got the comfort seat on it. Um, it, it would be criminal for me to get rid of it so quickly. So it's not something I'm going to go into lightly because chopping and changing motorbikes, which I very know is an expensive business even when you're looking at sort of cheaper motorcycles like the crf it's the depreciation you take on new vehicles is is just insane and that's something i've always just had to bite um take on the chin and go yeah i accept that just because i prefer having a new vehicle that i know hasn't been abused by someone else it also saves all that haggling rubbish and worrying about buying something that's a bit of a dog that the uh, the previous owner has managed to uh, hide from you during the sales process and that piece of mind with warranties and all that sort of stuff but yeah i don't know i don't know it'd be nice to keep both and then have the beta for silly hoonage on my local lanes and maybe the odd enduro practice day or something and uh have the CRF for uh, doing some more dual sporting and traveling further afield and stuff and we've all seen how well B uh, Big Pezza gets on with his little 250 so the 300 will be that and more the only thing I don't like about it is that it's got a uh, one piece uh, frame subframe whereas the old CRF 250 uh, it's got a separate subframe and on a dirty bike where you're binning it a bit it's kind of a good idea having them separate I mean there's nothing to stop you getting the uh, 
the subframe straightened if you do bend it I mean you can do that you can strain steel frames completely and it's no problem at all but it's certainly a lot easier if you could do it without stripping the bike all the way down to the bare frame there's that bike on it he's behind me somewhere loitering just in my blind spot it's all right now I'm behind him or rather he's behind me but where he was sitting was just right outside my mirror arcs people really should ride a little bit more defensively if you can't see someone in their mirrors then they can't see you in their mirrors and I know you've kind of got to have stalks for eyes to be able to see all these things but once you've done a little bit of time in the saddle, you soon realise that it's in your blooming interest too. Now I ain't no IAM motorist or anything like that. I don't really want to be. Um, but I definitely think there's some life skills to be learnt. From being aware of your surroundings. Oh God, I'm such a lectury moany moany monason. <laughs> oh my word, it's rammed. And not with the cool kids, hardly any motorcycles, damn it. <laughs> there's some though, there's some. Oh. Alright, let's get some food, shall we? Get some norms. So that's the exhaust pipe. Um, it's quite good looking, does the job. And when I get them baffles out, it should be a lot better. A lot more noisy and a lot more enjoyable. Right, let's get back on the bike. Grease burger achieved. Oh, I'm feeling a proper fatty McFat fat at the moment. I only had a single burger. But it's done me. It's done me in, mate. It's done me in. It was nice to get up the hill. Not that I went up the hill, um, but nice to get over to Rikers. Had a natter with one of the familiar faces from the th car park there. And um, you fucking cunt. Well, with me about to be joining the dual carriageway, well, I guess it's time to end this here, isn't it? It's not been much of a vlog, but uh, it was nice to try out the exhaust pipe and find out what it sounds like, even though uh, slightly disappointed that it's not a bit more fruity than it actually is. But still, I'll get them baffles out as soon as I get home, and the next ride I'll have will hopefully be a little bit more fruity. Fruity! That wordy bird's still hovering around up above me. chasing anyway whatever's if you haven't done so already don't forget to click that subscribe button It'd be great to have you come back for some more and if you enjoyed this video why not give it a little thumbs up and if you didn't you can always give it a little thumbs down it's all cool I don't mind at all but whatever you do please drop in a comment I love hearing from you and uh, right you would say take care and I shall catch you all in the next one bye bye for now Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Rubber side down. <laughs>